Hey guys, today I'm going to address an article by Slate. I have never heard of this company before, but um, they're very critical of Andrew Yang. They say Andrew Yang is full of it, and the criticism, as with the political and calling Andrew Yang a, a selling snake oil, the criticism is coming mainly from I would say very left magazines. So today we don't just have the left, we have the very left, I would call. And their ideas, in my opinion, as a small business owner are quite scary. Um, like I've mentioned, one of their scary ideas to me is student loan forgiveness, which in principle should help a lot of students, right? But I can tell you, that my friends can all pay off their student loans. Uh, one of them works for a huge bank. And he, when you make a lot of money, you actually have a lot of debt because your credit is good. So just like um, when you ask, how did 2008 happen? It was because I bought one home, refinanced it when it went up in value, bought another home and another home. And many of my friends now have summer homes and that's what they do with their money. They just refinance it and they pay the minimal amount on student loans. So they went to NYU and one, and he went to UPenn Business and he has about 400K in student loans that he can refinance till infinity because his job. Um, so you might ask, why doesn't he just pay off his student loans? If the student loan interest rate is low at 5% or even under, and he's really good at making money and he can invest in an opportunity that makes him 10, 20%, why would he ever pay off the loans when he can just bet more on that opportunity? It sounds like a scam, but it really isn't. <laughs> As I thought it was a scam too, but my friend is a multimillionaire, so clearly he's doing something right. But it would heavily benefit him and my uh, doctor friends and um, a lot of the people with the most student loans are the richest and wealthiest people by a percentage. Yes, there are stories of that not being true, but as a percentage, if you can go to Harvard Business, Harvard Law, um, go to grad school after you go to Harvard, um, you typically come from a wealthy, and at the very least, you can pay back your student loans. And that, that's who currently holds most of the student loans in America. So the automation argument of that people, the left is attacking, I would call extreme left, is attacking Andrew Yang makes no sense. Um, if you want to know if automation is happening, you can go to your Walmart or your Target. And yes, there are more self-checkout, which is automation, right? Then, and I read a report and the report said, many items are stolen in self-checkout because either by mistake or in the very often case intentionally, and it's still worth doing because you save so much money on labor cost. If you want another example of automation, I went to Google. Uh, Google paid me to visit them in Ireland on a paid vacation with hotel, airfare, and I got to hang out at their HQ, their Cloud9, if you know what their cloud nine is, you've been to Google. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you clearly have nev never been to Google. The headquarters, I'm not talking about Mountain View. Mountain View is nice. Cloud nine is better. Um, that's their top level where you build things. But uh, part of what they have is a self-driving car. And yes, it works. It actually works. But now of course it's, you know, it's a path that it's gone over probably a thousand times. It's not like it can just take you from anywhere from Ireland to, um, let's say, the middle of the UK or London. Um, it only takes you around half an hour, a tour of Dublin. And that's about, it's, act, it's more than half. It's like a one hour tour of Dublin. And then it gets back to the Google headquarters. But isn't that all like a truck really needs? when you? So it's not the self-driving cars that will come first it's the self-driving trucks because their routes are fixed for the most part so when they go from point a to point b yes there might be an accident or something like that 
but it's a fixed route that they're interested in, Google's interested in now. It's not a variable route. So it's not like you have options to go anywhere you want from any location. It's you can go, it's like a bus, right? It's more like a bus. So trucks and buses will probably be automated before cars just because of the software that it's much, that already exists, I've seen it. And it's, I mean, I felt safe in the car. Tesla has something similar as well. I haven't seen the Tesla version of it, but I have seen the Google version. I can tell you it is very efficient and effective. So the automation, um, I think when they say like, oh, no data is supporting this and blah, 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 but there is no automation right now in the trucking industry. So who knows what will happen? There will be time for the sector and people employed in it to adjust. Uh, I would beg to differ because I would say that if you've been a truck driver for 20 years and your skill set is specifically truck driving, and that's a skill set not everyone has, then that doesn't sound like I can teach you how to code, right? Like, are, are we going to teach these people how to maintain trucks now? And then in that, in that case, we wouldn't need as many truck drivers, right? Just like Walmart, one person can handle 10 registries at one time. There's just like red button that lights up whenever somebody needs help. So I think the extreme left is incredibly afraid of Andrew Yang so far. I mean, these are people who don't have facts. So the, the one criticism I really have about the extreme left is they're very emotional people. Um, I would call them artist type people, I guess. They're not math people and they're not business people. Um, for instance, AOC is not a business person. She was a waitress. Um, it's unlikely. She went to a very expensive college, but I don't remember what her major was, but I would be shocked if it was business. And if it was business, she couldn't find a business position in Boston, which is full of businesses. Or um, I think, uh, what was her name? The one from um, Sudan? I don't know what her background is, but I'm almost certain that it's not business uh, from the way. And again, I'm just guessing here. Um, from the way that she describes, like her, it's very emotional. When AOC visits a uh, detention facility in Texas, now like I mentioned, I volunteered my last year of law school when every, all my friends were studying for bar exam, I was at a detention facility helping people being deported because that's what I valued. That is not what AOC went. AOC went for media coverage and pictures. I can tell you the last thing these security guards would ever let me do is take my cell phone in and snap pictures of everything and then post it on a website, you know, on news. I, it's a prison. A, it, it's a deportation system. It's a prison. Like, what are you talking about? It's not a five-star hotel. And the whole, you know, children don't get toothbrushes. And I... I don't know, like my experience at a detention facility, a deportation facility was way different from what's being portrayed by AOC and the squad. I'm, I'm like kind of amazed, like I, and the system is in place for abuse to be prevented because abuse is uh, that's something that you worry about. So I think they are attacking Andrew Yang, who's a very factual mathematical based candidate with these emotional arguments. And honestly, they don't really make any sense. So they're talking about reports of how automated trucking would not cost truckers their jobs. But let's think about that for a moment. We no longer need a person in a truck for 20 plus hours to drive. Truckers make 100,000 plus dollars a year, even for Walmart. So it's a highly expensive thing. There is a lack of truckers currently. There's not enough truckers to fill the position of driver uh, to drive these Walmart. And let's be honest, it's going to be Amazon, right? You know, how many people order Amazon? One of the funny parts, what my friend was telling me about this joke. And he was complaining that the traffic in Houston is so bad and there's all these trucks all the time. And I was like, yeah, but like you order stuff off Amazon every day. Where do you think these, your items come from? They come from a truck, right? <laughs> Houston. He's like, oh, well, I guess I can't complain. I mean, he's still, it's an employee. 
he still complained about it. He's a developer, so you think he would know better than this. Um, but yeah, that's why there's so many trucks on the road is because people are ordering stuff all the time from Amazon or Walmart now has, you know, they have a, what, they can put the grocery in your fridge now type of deal. So I think that the extreme left is really afraid of Andrew Yang because he's actually fact-based. It's really easy to make up some emotional statements and then get pity. And that's what it is. You know, I, I really don't like pity. Um, I started my business. Um, I bought out free partners at 71%. I didn't expect pity for them. No, I mean, they played hard, hardball. I paid them a ton of money to get by the business back, which I really didn't feel like paying. And I still don't think I owe them. So when you talk about a business owner and you talk about someone who has Andrew Yang's experience, that's real life experience, running a business with employees, sometimes disgruntled employees, um, selling a business to a bigger business like Kaplan, understanding the dynamics of uh, what you have to, tr how you treat your employees. I, I mean, this is all really valuable stuff to run a presidency or even sit in Congress. No offense to AOC, but being a waitress does not add any skill set. I know you can say, oh, well, you're a person person and you're, you know, you understand people at the wait at the waitressing. Club. I mean, come on. We're trying to run a country here. We're not, not trying to run a restaurant, right? So when people like tell me, oh, look at AOC, so brave. So he went to the detention facility. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I didn't get any media coverage, and I was there instead of taking the bar exam. And I went there, did my job every single day, and it was a long drive there. The only way I passed my New York bar exam was I listened to those uh, uh, Kaplan on tape. <laughs> on a ride back and a ride too. They're going to go after Andrew Yang because he scares them. Because he doesn't use enough emotion. It's just facts and numbers. I mean, his universal basic income, people think it's emotional, but it's just numbers. It's just data. I mean, what could be more data than I'm going to give you X amount of money um, that stacks and does, you know, does this and you have to be Y amount eight. It, everything is based on like information. Like, I don't get it. So I think, you know, I'm a big fan of some Democrats like Nancy Pelosi. I'm a huge fan of hers because he changed my life. But uh, some of the other people, like the squad, and like it just seems like very scary to me as a small business owner to leave the country in the hands of someone who's never run a business before. Like if we... I mean, I, I get it. It makes sense. Like, it's very emotional. But I'd rather have a candidate like Andrew Yang who understands facts, who's written books about facts and data. I mean, we shouldn't make decisions based on our emotions. We should look at all the data and then make a decision based on, you know, is universal income going to help more than it hurts? Are we going to help our businesses? And that's what they're scared of. Bye, guys.